Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Anjit Iqbal, working as assistant consultant radiologist in um, the radiology department. And I will be presenting radiology grant round. So today's topic is imaging finding and diagnostic pearls in Wallstone IES. Wallstone IES is a dramatic complication of Wallstone disease, uh, uncommon but not exceptional, and it represents a cause of mechanical intestinal obstruction, which predominantly occurs in elderly patients with multiple comorbidities who had suffered from past episode of calculus cholecystitis, and this led to adhesion formation, pressure necrosis, and wall erosion with subsequent polycystoenteric fistulation and gallstone migration. And uh, usually gallstone ileus uh, takes an insidious course and the presentation is typically non-specific with usually intermittent obstructive symptoms as known progresses uh, through the bowel. And it includes nausea, vomiting, vague abdominal pain and distension. And eventually signs of mechanical wall obstruction may occur, including abdominal colicky pain and total constipation. So here you can see that this is a schematic representation of the most common routes of pillory indirect fistulation in the order of frequency. And uh, the most common is polycystoduodenal and then comes the polycystoduodenal, polycystoclonic, and the least common is polycystogastric fistula. So now I will be discussing some of the findings uh, that you can see on a plain abdominal x-ray. Uh, so what we can see is known as regular triad, and uh, this is uh, this triad consists of uh, air in the biliary tree uh, and ectopic radiopaque stone, and also the features of small uh, gut obstruction. So as you can see, that this is a supine uh, X-ray abdomen. And uh, I don't know how clear it is to you, but if you see, there is some radio lucencies here in the right hypochondrium. This is actually air uh, uh, in the biliary tract known as pneumobilia. And if you see, there is a radio dense rounded opacity which is superimposed on the lumbar uh, spine. Uh, and this is the migrated gallstone. Also, you can see that there is a really distended stomach. So what happened here is that the, uh, the gallstone migrated from the uh, gallbladder into the duodenal bulb and which resulted in gastric outward obstruction and hence the stomach is distended. So you can see all the three signs of rectal triad here. The gallstone, the dilated loop, and as well as pneumobilia. But um, it should be noted that the regular triad could be observed in its complete manifestation in only 36% of the cases because, uh, and this limited sensitivity is due to obesity, superimposed bony structure, or fluid filled bowel obscuring the gallstone. And furthermore, as you know, that only 20% of the gallstone contain uh, calcium to be identifiable on the plain radiograph as they are mostly composed of cholesterol. So um, usually we just see only one or two signs of the regular triad. Um, and I also um, will add here that the pneumobilia may result from prior surgical or endoscopic biliary manipulation so a uh, clinical picture should be taken into consideration. Uh, here is another um, erect abdominal um, 
x-ray and uh, what you can see that there are uh, fluid filled um, small bowel gut in the left upper quadrant uh, with air fluid levels and um, then if you see uh, closely you can see that there is a, a thin rim of calcification in the right hemipelvis this is actually the gallstone and it is causing uh, intestinal obstruction we cannot see any uh, neumobilia here So uh, the next modality is ultrasound. And uh, what we can see in the ultrasound is a waiting association of uh, Gaussian alias sonographic imaging finding has been described in the literature, including pneumobilia or air in the gallbladder fossa, bowel loop distension and wall swelling, as well as peritoneal fluid. Uh, however, um, uh, there are many limiting factors when we do an ultrasound, uh, and it depends on the body habitus or if there are excessive bowel gases. Uh, here I'm showing you a picture of the liver, and as you can see that there are echogenic linear areas in the liver, and uh, these linear area is actually uh, air in the biliary tree. The next modality which I will be discussing is CT scan. And this the CT scan has a sensitivity of about 90 to 93% and specificity of 100%. And this is considered the main diagnostic imaging technique in investigating small uh, uh, in the gut obstruction or even any other cause of the acute abdominal. Uh, we will be seeing the uh, same regular triad signs in the CT, but the picture will be more clear. Uh, we will see small bowel obstruction, rim calcified or total calcified ectopic uh, gallstone, and abnormal gallbladder with the presence of air fluid level in the gallbladder or fluid accumulation with irregular water. Uh, now, the fistulous connection uh, may be directly identified as well, uh, but uh, it may not be identified. Also, uh, two important things that we uh, uh, look in a CT is the size of the calculus. Uh, usually, when the size of the calculus is more than two centimeter, it results in the um, uh, obstruction. And uh, also, uh, what we can see is the presence of additional stone. Uh, so the surgeon can accurately search for them uh, during operation uh, to prevent the recurrence. So um, this is an axial contrast enhanced CT. Uh, and if you see, uh, this is the gallbladder and this is the duodenum. And there is a fistulous communication between the gallbladder. You can see a partially calcified stone uh, in the gallbladder. And now in the small gut, uh, in the duodenal loop, you can see another migrated gallstone. And it is resulting in a distended uh, proximal bowel loop with air fluid level. In this image, uh, on the x-ray, you can see that there is a radiodense opacity here in the uh, right lower quadrant uh, with distended, multiple distended gut loops. And the CT of the same patient is where you can see that the stone lies at the IUC junction, which is the narrowest part. And uh, there is some obstruction, element of obstruction here. Uh, now, this is a very interesting uh, slice where you can see that uh, there is a distended gut loop. Uh, but uh, 
you can just see uh, distended gut loops. Um, can see uh, gallstone here. But this is the reformatted sagittal image of the same patient. And what you can see that there is a distended gut loop and then there is a transition point. And just before the transition point, there is a focal dilatation. Now, if you see clearly, you can see a thin rim of calcification. And if you take the CT density, the CT density of this part and this part is different. This is fluid attenuating and this has a different CT density. So uh, what is this? This is a gallstone, which is isodense. So it is very difficult uh, uh, to locate and you can miss it. But there are some signs that if there is a transition point and if there is a difference in the density between the gut and this part, uh, then this is a uh, isodense gallstone line here. Few more images. Uh, this is how the pneumobilia uh, looks like uh, on a CT. And down there, uh, this, this is again pneumobilia, dilated small bowel gut loops. And there is the gallstone line in the distal uh, small gut loops. Another image. Uh, this is the gallbladder, which you can see it. Uh, it is deformed and there is some calcification in its wall. It's actually porcelain gallbladder. And then this is the duodenum. And here is the fistulous communication between the two and dilated gut loops. And down there, in the distal eye loop, you can see a partially calcified gallstone. Another image, uh, this is the duodenal bulb and you can see a slightly less radiodense um, stone, gallstone. And uh, this is the shrunken gallbladder. This is the duodenum, this is the fistulous communication between the two, and this is the pneumobilia. So uh, the role of the M MRI is quite uh, uh, limited. We don't use MRI. Um, MRI might be used in a few cases uh, where you cannot perform CT or uh, if uh, there is a uh, um, the surgeon want to know the fistula anatomy. This is a fat suppressed sequence and uh, here you can see this is the fistulous communication between the duodenum and the gallbladder. This is a T2 sequence of the same patient and it shows this is the fistulous communication between the two. And similarly on MEMP images, the fistulous communication. So there are few mimickers of the gallstone ileus. One is the enterolith and uh, the other is the bizarre or any other foreign body which may closely resemble the CT appearance of the migrated stone. But if you see something like that, you have to see any uh, biliary enteric fistula and uh, the appearance of the gallbladder. So if there is no biliary enteric fistula and a normal appearing gallbladder, so this suggests any other, uh, uh, these two pathologies. So, uh, I will be presenting two cases uh, from our radiology department of the gallstone ideas. The first case is a 79 year old female uh, which presented with mild cough and sputum for the last seven days. And for the last two days, uh, she developed pain, upper abdomen, nausea, non villous vomiting. And uh, when the CT was done, there was a wall stone in the distal eye loops. Uh, you can see this concentric ring of calcification. 
and this was the coronal image from our department and uh, here you can see that this deformed uh, thing is the gallbladder and then this is the duodenum and if you see here these two these two are connecting and this is actually the fistulous communication Similarly, uh, this is the uh, image of the same patient, and uh, this is the fistulous communication between the deformed gallbladder and the uh, duodenum. The coronal image of the same patient showing the gallstone here. So the patient underwent surgery and uh, then she was discharged. The second case is again a 77 year old male patient uh, who presented in emergency with pain abdomen, uh, nausea, vomiting for the last five days. And uh, this was associated with recent onset of distension and constipation for the two days. Uh, Previously known case of gallstone for the last eight years, but he was asymptomatic. And so when the CT was done, there was a gallstone in the distal eye loops. Um, you can see different densities here. And then you can see a uh, uh, small bowel obstruction sign, fluid filled gut loops, and eight fluid level as well. And this was the coronal image of the same patient, which is showing a gallstone here. And emergency surgery was performed, and that was the gallstone. So, um, this, this I want to tell you that uh, abdominal X ray and ultrasound. Uh, though they are widely used in the emergency, but their sensitivity is quite low due to many factors. Uh, and the modality of the choice is CT at it helps in identified, uh, identifying the alternate causes of the patient's symptom too. And then we use only MRI if we have to see uh, the fistulous communication, communication uh, and if it's really important. So thank you so much uh, for listening to me and attending this uh, presentation.